Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Rico back at it again, ready to hit you with some news updates and how the Bills are faring in training camp. Here's the deal. The focus right now is on the offensive side of the ball. It's been on the offensive side of the ball because we offensively haven't done ish. Defense, you know, is solid. We actually improved our defense, in my opinion, compared to last year. So there's really not a, lot, a whole lot of talk about on that defense. I mean, let's keep it real. Let's just go right through it. The D-line is already set. Trent Murphy, Kyle Williams, Star Letulele, Jerry Hughes, Shaq Lawson as the backup. You know what I'm saying? And then you can kind of filter in a few guys that are here. Eddie Yarbrough, you know what I mean? He was probably, he's probably going to make the squad. But Dolphus Washington, you feel me? So the depth is going to be there with the, with the name here or there. The linebacking crew is pretty set. One man gang, Alexander, Tremaine Edmonds running that middle at 20 years of age, which is damn impressive. And then you got Matt Milano. You got Vallejo on the back end. Dion Lacey doing his thing right now, uh, pushing to, uh, to, you know, mean to make the squad. Um, and a couple of the names on the defensive side at linebacker. And then the DBs set. Vontae, Trey, Philip Gaines, Johnson, uh, Saran Neal, Poyer, the jackknife in, in Hyde. So defense is set. We don't really gotta really talk about the defense. I mean, shoot, we're just gonna be start. We're gonna start trimming the fat pretty soon. Uh, but I mean, if you look at the defense, you already know who's making the squad and who potentially is not making the squad. It's the offense that people are paying attention to. The running back position, the quarterback position, receiver position, the tight ends, even the old line, bro. There's a whole bunch of stuff going down on the offense, and I'm here to break it down as best I can. Here's the deal. Quarterback position. I said it from the start. I'm going to say it again. The competition is really and truly going to be between AJ McCarron and Nate Peterman. You feel me? You know what I mean? I'm still rocking with Nate Peterman. He's had his ups and downs during camp. You know what I'm saying? He's making some good days, and he's got some bad days. And But the thing is, it's been pretty steady all throughout. You're saying with Nate Peterman, Adrian McCarron, and Josh Allen. Josh Allen has had some really good days, and then he's had some days that you can forget. Adrian McCarron is just playing it safe, just so he can make it right till the end. He's doing what veteran quarterbacks typically do. You know, you're battling against a rookie, you're battling against a, a second year guy, you're the oldest guy in the room, so all you gotta do is play it safe, don't turn the ball over, make the safe throws, you know what I'm saying? Aggressively throw downfield just to show that you, you got it, you feel me? But just don't make mistakes. And, and stay under the radar. And that's exactly what AJ McCarron is doing. You can't blame the man, you feel me? He's got the most experience, so he knows how the game is played. So, that being said, it's between those three men. Now, they're going to hold back Josh Allen because there's no need to rush it. There's no need to rush it. They brought in AJ McCarron for this reason, but they don't realize that AJ McCarron is just not gonna be handed that job. Peterman is gonna make it difficult. And the only time that you really need to go through this whole quarterback positioning and trying to slot is when the games happen and that's preseason camp is great get themselves conditioned get themselves knowing the playbook get themselves familiar with the receivers and the scheme and all that good stuff but can you apply it when there's live bullets in preseason that's what it comes down to you could be cute in training camp and mini camp and otas and all that stuff it's all fine and dandy but when the live bullets are coming you're in preseason, show me what you got. So if you don't come to play, you don't get that pay. And what I mean by that is you don't get to be on the field and make your money. You're gonna be sitting on that bench. So preseason, look for it to really happen. Now, let me put an asterisk in there. If, and this is just my opinion, and I think a lot of people share this opinion. If McCarron and Peterman are in the same boat, they are neck and neck, and Josh Allen happens to be neck and neck with him, and he's in the same boat, we got a decision to make. There's no point in holding a guy back that's a rookie, but he's playing just as good and making the same mistakes and making the same good plays as the two veteran guys. You still, you feel me? Like, there's no point. To me, if he's just as good as these guys, stick him in. There's no sense in wasting time and wasting the talent. Just, you know what I mean? Let him get his lumps and bruises right off the bat. You feel me? But if he's well behind, let the, the, let the, let the two older guys battle it out. And that's what preseason's all about. Running backs. LaShawn, number one. Chris Ivory, number two. Cadet, number three. Here is 
the the challenge is gonna be Keith Ford is making a name for himself he's really putting in work but so is Marcus Murphy and Marcus Murphy has the advantage because he came in pretty strong late in the year you everybody was wondering who the hell is Marcus Murphy oh shoot number 45 who's that that's Marcus Murphy don't play games man and he's ready to steal that number four spot uh, in order to be special teams but here's the deal Taiwan Jones may have something to do with that you feel me so Taiwan Jones is a veteran guy played for the Raiders we brought him in broke his forearm last year so he's looking to redeem himself and try to make things happen on this squad it's a three-man race Taiwan Jones Marcus Murphy Keith Ford here's how I think it plays out I think Marcus Murphy has the edge I think the youth I think the ability to give you what LaShawn McCoy gives you uh, in Marcus Murphy and his return ability, punt and kick return. But Taiwan Jones does the same. But I think if they're going to choose between the two, I, I'd pick Marcus Murphy. Uh, I just think that I think he gives you more of a receiving threat, uh, running the ball, and special teams. And I think that's what he edges over Taiwan Jones. Keith Ford practice squad is what i believe uh, he'll end up uh being tight ends i think it's gonna be the same as last year charles clay o'leary and thomas logan thomas uh jason crew is pushing jason crew is pushing you know what i'm saying i think it's it's paid the dividends that he's you know what i mean learned the tight end position i mean he was a former receiver you know what i'm saying so when you go from receiver to tight end it's a different ball game so he i think he's learned the position a little more and he's pushing athletic as hell so if he can learn that position, I think he has, and he's put the game in, he's going to push Logan Thomas for that third spot. So look for Logan Thomas and uh, Jason Kroon to be battling out for that position. Tollbridge and, um, and, and Lee, you know what I'm saying, serviceable, but y'all got to go. Uh, and last but not least, the receiver position. We just brought in former first round Baylor receiver, drafted to the Browns and Corey Coleman. 4-3 speed. You know what I'm saying? Has big play ability, never really panned out in Cleveland. Injuries took a toll. So my man has a fresh start in Buffalo. So now that, that muddies the waters quite a bit at the receiver role. So let's just keep things simple right now. Kelvin Benjamin, number one. Two, three, four. You can pretty much place in Curly, Zay Jones. And now that you bring in Coleman, you put in Coleman. Because you didn't just bring him just to kind of cut him. So, I mean, Coleman, those are your four. You've got to now find out who is going to take receivers five and six. Who is ready to step up and take five and six? Malachi Dupree has fallen off. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Foster falling off. They don't like that he's body catching and dropping balls and all that stuff. That doesn't work in the NFL. You know what I'm saying? They drafted Ray Ray McClough. Special team, you know what I mean? Scat back type receiver can do it all. So he's got an edge. Rod Streeter, you know what I'm saying? Coming back from the injury from last year. He's trying to make a name for himself. It's a tough sled right now, man. Who takes it at five and six? You got Brandon Riley still trying to make the squad. Ray Ray McLeod might squeak in and grab receiver five. I think Brandon Riley has done enough to maybe squeak in and take it. I don't think Andre Holmes makes the squad, man. I really don't. And then you got Cam Phillips pushing. Cam Phillips is pushing as well. So, yo, man, I'm still tripping on that. You, it's a three-man race for two positions. Brandon Riley, Cam Phillips, and Ray Ray McLeod. It's going to be between those three guys to see who makes the squad, man. That's, that's just what it is. That's what it comes down to. So, ladies and gentlemen, that right now is where we lie. Where we stand in terms of what the camp has given us where we stand in terms of position battles um, and we go from there. Main position that people are wanting to talk about and wanting to touch on, running back, receiver, quarterback, and tight ends. This offense has to improve this year. It needs to improve. Uh, and I think the team is taking steps. Dable is ripping these guys and making them know exactly what it is. You're not just gonna play one position. You're gonna play them all and you're gonna know them all. So it's interchangeable. You will never know what who is doing. You might see Ray Ray McLeod on the outside with, you know what I'm saying, Cam Phillips if he makes a team, or Brandon Riley, and then KB's in the slot. You just never know. So, let me know how you guys feel about what is going to transpire. Who's going to start at quarterback? Is it going to be Josh Allen eventually? Are they going to really, are they going to put the kid gloves on and say, nah, it's not your time right now, bro. It's not your time. Just sit down and let these, these boys duke it out. Asterix. 
I gotta bring it up. A little Mac. There's rumors that he's officially might be put on the block or he's up for trade. What do we give up to get Khalil Mack? I say Shaq Lawson. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I, I maybe I was overzealous with saying a couple first round picks. Maybe that's too much. I, I, I'm tripping. I was tripping on that. Because Jimmy G went for second round, man. And that's a quarterback. So Shaq Lawson and maybe a third. You feel me? Shaq Lawson, maybe a future second. Y'all know exactly what to do. Subscribe to the page, smash that like button, comment below, and share the video. Until next time, it's your boy.